Welcome to 3D.sk. On this site you can find thousands of images of whatever you need, from male and female characters, to costumes, to animals. We also have 3D scans, textures, texture maps, street photo reference, studio photo reference, and many more. In this tutorial I'll be discussing how to set up reference inside 3ds Max. Today I'll be using just the face, so it'll just be a front and side view. So for first of all, we're going to go to Street Photo Reference, Search. So I'm looking for any face, doesn't matter which one, male or female, just choose whichever one you like the look of or it's relevant to your project. So I'm going to choose Street 697. We need a front and a side view. So just click download and save to wherever it usually saves to, which will usually be in downloads, and then press OK. So first of all, we need to get a plane set up. So in the front view, hold control, left click drag out, and we have a plane. You can turn the left length segs and the width segs down if you like, but it doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to go to this view, maximize viewport, it's is down in the bottom right or alt w i'm going to turn angle snaps on I'm going to go to select and rotate which you can also get to by pressing e and i'm going to hold down shift and rotate it 90 degrees and this way Move the side view out to the end and move the front view out to the back. See, this is the back side and this is the back side. Alright, now that we've got that, we can go to our material editor. And if you're not in Compact Material Editor, you can get to it by clicking on Modes and then switching to. So clicking on the Diffuse, go to Bitmap, go to My Desktop. This is just where I have my files located, yours may be in a different place. I'm going to 3D.sk, Tutorials, Street Photo, and I'm going to go on Front. I do this. I can assign material to selection and show shaded material in the viewport. Now for the side view, same thing but the side view. Bitmap, side, and assign material to selection. As you can see, the image is very grainy. Now the problem with this is that the images from 3D.sk are very high resolution. So you may need to go to your viewport settings. Viewport configuration texture, baked procedural maps, texture maps, and viewport background environment. So if I switch these all up to, let's try 1496. Okay, now if I go for standard, high quality, and now I'm back after the very long loading. So now you can see that we've got our high res images inside 3ds Max. Now you do not have to do this last step, this is just if you prefer it that way and if you've got a better system. Otherwise the low resolution will do just fine. But really taking full advantage of the 3d.sk high quality images is really going to help you. So, now that we've got our front and side view, we can start to actually model. I'm now going to show you a technique called plane modeling. So first off, in the front view, start off by creating a plane around the eye, around here. Going to the modify panel, right clicking the plane and going on edible poly. Now. 
pressing F4 to turn on edged faces, you can start to move the eye around. So this is the base. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to a line or edge, click one of the edges holding shift and drag out on the X and Y. Same thing again, adjusting the edges and we do this all the way down to here. We can even drag out all the way to here. Holding control, selecting two edges, connect, go back to vertex selection, pressing one or pressing vertex in the modifier, adjusting these as we go. Now that we have the top done, we can now move on to the bottom. For the bottom, to connect it, you need to drag down here. Same techniques as before. Move this halfway across. Same thing over here, we're going to go like this. Let's move it over here. Control, click on this, and click Bridge. Press Alt X to be able to see through the image. Clicking to standard will allow you to see through it better. Back to high quality. Two. Connect. Back to one for vertex. Lining up all of these vertexes to the relevant place. What we can do is we can select the inner lids, select it all, move it forward. As you can see, it lines up. Now that we're, what we can do, select all the outers, double clicking, back slightly. To get a good start for the eye, I like to use the bend modifier. Now you see that my pivot is out of place, so I can easily fix this by going to Transform Toolbox, Center, and this will center to my mesh. Get rid of the Transform Toolbox. Going to the Bend modifier, I can go to the X axis, the Angle, and I can bend it round. bend it 180 degrees. This is just to give you a good start off. You can also use the scale tool, adjust it slightly, be lessen the angle a little bit. That gives us quite a good start. Now you can collapse that all. Do is I'd like to rotate it as this is how the eye is. Back into this view. You may need to adjust a few areas.
Make sure there's 100% a loop going round. And it's following the outer and inner lines. And uh, we have this. And primarily going off what it looks like in the front view. And kind of taking a guess at what it should look in the side view while also using the reference. See, apparently it goes much further back. So there is one way we could do this. We could use the scale tool, move it back, format it a tiny bit. The move tool on this. Go into standard. Quality. Going to go into just reference, just like. Loops. Side edge, holding shift, dragging the outer part of the eyeball. See that we've got a start of an eye. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll be discussing how to use the same techniques we learnt in Lesson 1 and apply them to Lesson 2 using the mouth. It'll be quite similar, except just a different shape for the mouth. Thank you, and see you in the next tutorial. Welcome to the end of this tutorial. Feel free to comment with feedback and suggestions below. And you can also comment on what you would like to see us do in the future. Thank you, and goodbye.